I'm going to show you and prove to you that the Israelites are black, were always black, always will be black. Is it Nathaniel? Yeah, he a prophet sent back to the earth, back to the earth. He sent you to wake up the people and tell them, come out of the church, come out of the church. Be ready for war, soon as they run to get out of the dirt, out of the dirt, hey. Shout out, why? shout out, why? shout out, why? tools down. Shout out, why? shout out, why? shout out, why? tools down. Got the juice, I ain't talking no we got late, cause we walk in the light of a new day. I can't listen to nothing a fool say, thank the Lord that he showed us a new way. Shout out, why? shout out, why? shout out, why? tools down. Shout out, why? shout out, why? shout out, why? Shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is, that's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I often love to read your shout out letters of exhortation and donations. But before I do that, I often like to cover a very small but very important topic. Now today I'm going to discuss uh, Pastor Strick Strickland. That's right, Pastor Strick Strickland. Some of you heard of him, some of you may have not, but today you will be enlightened. But before I get to our brother, Pastor Strick Strickland, let me show you a small clip regarding our history. A tribute for the Negro being a vindication of the moral, intellectual, and religious capabilities of the colored portion of mankind. All right, this was published in 1848. I'm going over to page. All right, I'm going to start here where it says the Jews. The Jews, however, slightly, their features may have assimilated to those of other nations amongst whom they are scattered from the causes already stated, certainly form a very striking example as regards the uncertainty of perpetual perpetuity in color, excuse me, descended from one stock and prohibited by the most sacred institutions, talking about God's laws, from intermarrying with the people of other nations and yet dispersed according to the divine prediction. That's Deuteronomy 28 verse 64, the divine prediction about them being scattered into every country on the globe. This one people is marked with the colors of all. Fair in Britain and Germany, brown in France and in Turkey, swarthy, that means black, in Portugal and in Spain. Olive, that means brown or black. Olives come in three colors, green, brown, or black. Olive in Syria and in Chaldea. Tawny, that also means black. Tawny or copper colored in Arabia and in Egypt whilst they are black at Congo in Africa. Wow, talking about the Jews. Let's move over. All right, let's read this. A remarkable fact in the history of Loango and the empire of Congo is that the country, according to a statement which was fully credited by Oldendorp, himself a writer of most correct judgment and of unimpeachable Veracity contains many Jews settled in it. Who retain their religious rights and the distinct habits which keep them isolated from other nations. Though thus separate from the African population, they are black, talking about the Jews, and resemble the other Negroes in every respect as to physical character. It is probably... In allusion to this case that Pennington in his textbook says, the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. See that? Talking about the Jews, a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. This was written in 1848. Wow. Mm. A social and religious history of the Jews. 
by Salo Whitmay Barron. All right, this was printed in 1973. The Jewish Publication Society of America. Well, alrighty then. Let's go inside this book. I'm going over to page 265. All right, read along with me. During the last quarter of the 16th century, there were several other accusations against individuals who allegedly performed such suspicious acts as removing the sinews from certain parts of, the, of animals before eating them, cooking their food with oil rather than lard, and betraying other symptoms of Jewish infidelity, meaning Jewish unbelief. Less routine was the case of a centenarian, that means 100-year-old Negro, 100-year-old Negro, Pedro Alvarez. So there was this black man named Pedro Alvarez who was reported to have insisted that God had commanded all men to be circumcised. This Negro, Pedro Alvarez, was a Jew, okay? He was a Jew. And this was in Spain. That's Iberia, all right? Let's go on, because as you read further down, it goes into the, Inqu the Spanish Inquisition against the Jews. It's funny how they threw in this 100-year-old Negro, and it says there was no trial because Alvarez died in prison. This was regarding the Spanish Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition. All right, let's move on. I'm going to page 354. A new impetus to seek shelter in the unexplored dark continent, the dark continent is Africa, was given to Jewish refugees from the Iberian uh, persecutions from the Spanish persecutions after 1391 in the area around Tendirma, some 60 miles southwest of Timbuktu. That's in Africa. Founded in 1496, Jews had allegedly lived for generations under seven kings, each of whom had an army of 12,000 knights. Wow. Y'all see that? So you had Jews living in Africa, found in this area, founded in 1496. Remember, the persecution started here in 1391. They founded this place, Tendirma, in 1496, and they lived for generations under seven kings, each of whom had an army of 12,000 knights. So the black Jews were the knights. Let's, 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 let's not just stop there, though. Let's go down. It has been suggested by no, by no less an authority from Friedrich Retzel that the island of Sao Tome, that's St. Thomas, that's on the west coast of Africa, discovered by the Portuguese in 1471 and subsequently used as a place of deportation for Jews unwilling to adopt baptism. You had many of the black Jews who refused to be baptized in a Roman Catholic church under Christianity, which was nothing but white supremacy. We recall the forcible removal of Portuguese Jewish children to that locality in 1497. So these Portuguese Jewish children were removed to the island of St. Thomas, okay? May have been instrumental in the settlement of many Jews in the neighboring West African lands. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Do you understand? Let's read it again. It has been suggested by no less an authority from Friedrich Ratzel that the island of Sao Tome, St. Thomas, that's on the west coast of Africa, discovered by the Portuguese in 1471 and sub subsequently used as a place of deportation for Jews unwilling to adopt baptism, we recall the forcible removal of Portuguese children Portuguese Jewish children to that locality in 1497 may have been instrumental in the settlement of many Jews in the neighboring West African lands. Wow. Wow. All right. Look at this. These tenuous lines of investigation have been pursued mainly by anthropologists 
who have looked for patterns of thought and behavior reminiscent of those known among Jews and found among various African tribes and their descendants transplanted, let me zoom in, let me just zoom in right there a little better, uh, known among Jews and found among various African tribes and their descendants transplanted to the new world. The new world is the United States of America and the Caribbean islands. Okay, that's the new world. So you had Jews from among various African tribes transplanted to the new world. Okay, representative of that school of thought is Joseph J. Williams, whose work on Hebrewisms in West Africa still is a major source of information, both substantive and speculative, beginning with the study of Ashanti descendants living in Jamaica. Williams writes, this is what he writes, in the first place, many Hebrewisms were discovered in the Ashanti tribal customs. Then several Ashanti words were found to have a striking resemblance to those of equivalent Hebrew meaning. Finally, the supreme being of the Ashanti gave gave strong indication of being the Yahweh of the Old Testament. I was taught the pronunciation is Yahweh, but we know it's talking about the same God of the Old Testament in the Bible, of the entire Bible, as a matter of fact. Look at this. Of course, since these, since these descendants of Ashanti tribesmen lived alongside of, sometimes in the very households of Jamaican Jews, the origin of such contacts in the Ashanti's original African habitat can no longer be ascertained, meaning they lost that history. General History of Africa, editor B.A. Ogot. I'm on page 67. I'm going down right here to this paragraph. Africans also settled along parts of the Malabar coast during the 17th and 18th centuries. These were black Jews. Let's read that again. Africans also settled along parts of the Malabar coast during the 17th and 18th centuries. These were black Jews, descendants of African slaves who had left Cochin and Karela in southern India to come and settle on that coast. Most became domestics and intermarried with local inhabitants and other Jews. What I want you to see is that the Africans who settled along Malabar were black Jews, descendants of African slaves. I hope you gleaned something from that very small clip. It had some pertinent information in there. Y'all got to excuse my voice. It's, I'm going hoarse. But I uh, got my little ginger tea here. Excuse me. And I left my Shout Out Tuesday mug in New York. So I need them to mail it to me, please. All right. So, y'all know I always say that Christianity is a hell of a drug. Christianity is a hell of a drug. In fact, it's perverse. And corrupt. Christianity is both perverse and corrupt. So let's take a look at a chain of events that occurred from, I believe it's from 2018 all the way. I thought, I thought this thing was done and over with, but it, it, it has only come back, resurfaced again this year. So from 2018 to now, this case has been going on. Let me show you a brief, small clip regarding our brother, Pastor Strick Strickland. I'm going, we're going to listen to his sermon, and then we're going to get into what actually occurred. I make no judgments, no judgments on my part regarding this situation, but I do blame the Christian religion. So let's take a look. Send your toe, Nehemiah. Send Nehemiah. Come on down. Can I get a witness here? The messenger called him. Said Nehemiah, come on down. Called him. But Nehemiah took one look and told, told the messenger, I can't afford to come down now. 
doing a great work why should the work cease while I come down to you four times they call down Nehemiah come on down but Nehemiah kept saying can't afford to come down now. Nehemiah was saying in his own mind, you should have got me while I was down there. Oh, but the Lord have done too much for me to come down. Yes, preach Strickland. I'm doing the very best I can. Galilee, happy anniversary. The Lord told me to tell you, stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. Yes, with tears in your eyes. Stay on the wall with pain in your body. Stay on the wall. Nehemiah say yes. They talked about me, but I'm gonna keep on building. Nehemiah say yes. They lied on me, but I'm gonna keep on building. Yes. Every now and then made me feel bad, but I got to keep on building. I got to stay there. Tell a neighbor, say neighbor, stay the course. Stay the cause. Be able to say, Lord, burdens got heavy sometimes. Lord, tears fill my eyes. But I stayed on the battlefield. I stayed from commencement, from conception to commencement. I finished the test. Did there anybody? Here that's got a made of mine 54 years, but tell the devil it ain't over. Tell the devil I'm going higher in the Lord. Tell the devil this is not my end. I'm on my way. I come to tell you tonight. I got a made of mine. I'm gonna stay on the wall. Why are you staying? I'm staying there. Because I got a savior that climbed up Calvary's hill with my sin and your sin, and he stayed, he stayed, he stayed, he stayed. He stayed, yeah, yeah. He stayed right down to the night hours. When he hung his head. First and foremost, we bring the love of God to our community. That being said, I want to introduce you to the chairman of our Law and Social Justice Committee, my pastor, the Reverend Pastor Strick Strickland of the Second Baptist Church here in Kalamazoo, the historic Second Baptist Church here in Kalamazoo. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Moore. To the president and to all of you here today, I would like to thank all of the members of the Alliance along with the various representatives of the community, uh, Interfaith Homes, along with all of you that are here just to participate today in whatever capacity. While the reality of the recent tragedy is beyond words, I'm grateful and humbled that this tragedy has brought out the best in so many of us. On behalf of our president, Dr. Michael T. Scott, and his cabinet, we are eternally grateful for every contribution that you have made to restoring the lives of these victims as we all have been deeply wounded by this critical crisis. Out of respect for time, I'll be as brief and direct as possible. As many of the community are here, uh, we are also joined today by our Associated Press and staff members, we feel it's necessary to make some statements on behalf of the Law and Social Justice Committee of the Northside Ministerial Alliance. For decades throughout the history of our country, the media has capitalized on its broad visibility and influence. While the media is unquestionably a valuable asset to our community, we are likewise often victimized 
and even more so villainized by some of the reports that sometimes come from our tragic events. We are here today in hopes of challenging the media to continue to bring the truth to the surface in full truth and not just have truth. Our new disturbing details tonight about the child sex trafficking case against a prominent West Michigan pastor. Michigan State Police say that the Reverend Strick Strickland and his wife used their jobs at a school and a church to recruit teenage boys to send them naked photos and have sex for money. Nope, 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 stop. No, nope. mm, mm mm Don't pray for me. Get up. Get off your knees, player. Get off your knees. Unbow your head. Unbow your head. Don't pray for me. Please don't send no messages because they getting polluted. They getting diluted with bullshit. Don't pray for me. I'm good. I will write Jesus myself. I'll text message. I'll send a pigeon. I'll walk. I'll crawl. I'll bark. I'll, I'll, I'll... Whoa, Lord, please hear me. Don't pray for me. I don't know what y'all think is going on, but I'm telling you right now, whatever type of energy that you're applying on my life, okay, that, that does not help me succeed, please stop. Please stop using religion as this thing of, well, if I, if I quote some scriptures, then I'll make it sound more realistic. If I got a high position in the church, then I'll make it sound more realistic. Come on now. We know these church people out here doing, doing dirt just like the regular people. Don't pray for me, sister. Brother, don't pray for me. How, let me tell you something. Half of these people running around here sleeping with each other anyway. And the fact of the matter is, when you got a sinner that, that say, I'm a Christian and I'm holy, sanctified, and X, Y, and Z, and then they come and talk about, let me lay hands on you. Nope, I don't know where your hands been. I don't know where you, don't pray for me. I'm good. Okay, when you get down on your knees, I don't know what you've been doing. You got dirty knees. And I'm telling you right now, I don't think, I don't think God listening to you, player. I don't think God heard you when you had said you was praying for me. Strickland faces 11 felony counts, including child sex trafficking, child sexual abuse, and criminal sexual conduct. News 8 Susan Samples has covered the controversy surrounding Strickland for years. She's on this story tonight. According to court documents, state police say the abuse happened here in the Strickland's church-owned home on Prairie in Kalamazoo. This is where investigators say the pastor and his wife sexually abused four teenage boys ages 15 to 17 over a three-year period from 2015 to 2018. Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. Didn't do it, didn't do it, didn't do it. This is Reverend Strick Strickland, his attorney by his side, holding a news conference in early 2019 to deny all allegations back when they first surfaced. Strickland was senior pastor at Second Baptist Church in Kalamazoo and a parapro at Phoenix High School where his wife was a secretary. In the news conference, the now 37-year-old said he had opened the home he shared with his wife Jasmineke and their eight kids to other troubled young people in Kalamazoo but only to help them find a better path. We do that as the word of God instructs us to do. We share our resources, we exercise good stewardship and do the best that we can to help as many people along the way. And it's very unfortunate that that is being seen as something negative. In court records, Michigan State Police said Strickland and his wife used their jobs to find teenage boys who they paid from $50 to $200 for naked photos and to have sex with Strickland's wife in their basement while the pastor watched from an adjacent room with a window. One of the alleged victims told police Strickland lent him a car and said he could keep it if he allowed the pastor to perform a sex act on him. The teen said he felt coerced because he needed the car. Another teen told police his grandmother had arranged for Strickland to mentor him. State police and court records say Strickland engaged in similar behavior with his ex-wife years ago in his home state of Mississippi. That's where he lives now, though he's expected to turn himself in in Kalamazoo this week. His wife's attorney says he expects charges to be filed against her in the near future. In Kalamazoo, Susan Samples, News 8. I understand. One thing I did neglect to add was I am allowing him to live in Mississippi during the interim as long as he's available for court. Thank you. Um, and you know, Mr. Strickland, that if you do not come to court, uh, you will be arrested very quickly in Mississippi and you will be extradited to the state of Michigan. And uh, having seen the results 
of individuals being extradited from state to state, it is not a pleasant process, and it is not something that you want to experience. You need to stay in touch with Mr. Hills. If you do, in fact, request counsel from the public defender's office, we will do that, and you will still need to maintain contact with those uh, those attorneys also. Um, yes, yes, Your I, Honor. I'm, I'm not going to add the wife as a no contact at this point. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I think she, her case stands on the, its own merits. Okay. Today at noon, big developments unfolding in a high-profile child sex trafficking case involving a former Kalamazoo pastor. Michigan State Police say Strick Strickland is now considered a fugitive after he failed to turn himself in on charges he trafficked teenagers for sex. But Strickland's attorney told News 8 Susan Samples his client is not running. Susan? That's right, Emily. Mike Hills told me the 37-year-old pastor will turn himself in, quote, very soon. Hills says his client who's been living in Mississippi has been struggling to get back to Kalamazoo because he's been dealing with hurricane weather and, quote, transportation issues, according to Strickland's attorney. Michigan State Police told us Strickland, who was supposed to turn himself in by today, instead called this morning and said he had car trouble. MSP says the former pastor at Second Baptist Church has had a reasonable amount of time to get back to Kalamazoo, so investigators now consider him a fugitive and have turned the case over to its fugitive task force. Kalamazoo County's prosecutor charged Strickland 12 days ago with human trafficking and child sex abuse, accusing him of using his former position with Kalamazoo Public Schools and as a pastor to find and pay for teenage boys to engage in sexual activities, sometimes with Strickland's wife, while the pastor allegedly watched. He is also accused of getting some of those teens to send him pictures. Strickland's wife, Jasmineek, is expected to be charged in this case as well, but that has not happened as of yet. Again, Strickland's attorney says he'll be turning himself in very soon. MSP says he's a fugitive as of right now. We'll keep track of the track of the case and let you know what happens. Live in the newsroom, Susan Samples, back to you. Well, alrighty then. What I want to do now is take a quick look through the scriptures and see what the scriptures say about modern day Christianity. And if you examine it, the word Christianity is not in the Bible. The word Christian is in the Bible, I believe about three times. That is Greek for the word for anointed. That's Greek for the English word anointed. Okay, so that's where it comes from. I'm gonna open up with Isaiah 24, Isaiah the 24th chapter and verse five, it reads, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore have to curse, devour the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. There's going to be a major destruction here on this planet. And Christianity is at the focal point in terms of wickedness. And what I mean by that is that, remember, that religion that's called Christianity teaches our people, the 12 tribes of Israel, that's who we are. It teaches us God's law is done away with. Therefore, we live immoral lives. We break the dietary law. We don't keep any of God's ceremonial high holy days. We have no civil, uh, 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 we don't live civilly with one another. We are, we are, a, we've become a base people. And that is what Christianity has further push in the hearts and minds of black and Latin men and women. Okay. So I want to go from there to Romans 6, 14. Let me show you what Christianity does. Romans chapter six, y'all follow along. And verse 14 and 15, it reads, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Let's examine sin first and foremost. Because, you know, when we meet brothers and sisters on the street for the first time and they say that they're Christian, we ask them, what is sin? Do you realize that I'd say like 9.99% of them cannot explain sin? And it's a shame. Not only is it a shame, it's pathetic. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. It reads, Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law so you can't say you're a sinner 
then say, oh, God's laws are done away with. It makes no sense. Back to Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, meaning breaking God's laws should not rule our lives, should not dominate our lives. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. See that part right there where it says, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What does that mean? Now, before I explain it, I'm going to read the next verse. Uh, what then? Shall we sin? Shall we break the commandments? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Now, it sounds like an oxymoron. It sounds like almost a contradiction. It's, uh, if one part he says we're not under the law, but then it says, uh, shall we sin, which means break the law, Shall we break the law because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. It's like, what? What, a, what does that mean? What does that mean? So let's ask, this, let's ask ourselves this. You have laws that falls under the moral laws, like, for example, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Can we break those things? Because if any of you say yes, that means that we are justified in killing one another. We are justified in stealing from one another. We are justified in lying against one another. How about thou shalt not commit adultery? Are we justified in sleeping with one another's wife and or husband? Are we justified in that? If you have any common sense right now, you're saying no, that makes no daggone sense. So now, what does it mean we are not under the law? You don't have to guess. You could just go over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Let's go on over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. And we're going to read, just to get to the point, we're going to read verse 8 through 10. Hebrews 10, verse 8 through 10. It reads, above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. So what didn't God want anymore? No more sacrifices. Remember, there are five categories of laws in the Bible, and Christ broke them down to two. But let's break those five categories down. What are they? You have the moral laws. You have the civil laws. You have the ceremonial laws. You have the dietary laws. Then you have the sacrificial laws. Out of those five, what does the Bible say we're not under anymore? Let's read it again. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 8 through 10. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. What law? The law of sacrifice. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. What does that mean? He taketh away the first covenant of animal sacrifice that he may establish the second. What's that? The second means the second covenant or new covenant of Christ dying on the cross. Verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So who took the place of animal sacrifice? Christ himself. He sacrificed himself once for all the nation of Israel. That's what he did. Okay, remember, we're reading the book of Hebrews. This is not the book of Moab. This is not the book of the Philistines. It's the book of the Hebrews, the Israelites. All right. So the only law that was done away with was the law of sacrifice and those things that pertained to to the laws of sacrifice, like you had to go to a high priest, you had to go to a Levitical priest, go into the, te uh, the, the temple, um, offer rams, bullocks, goats, sheep, and, and pigeons, so forth and so on. All of that was uh, fulfilled in Christ. Remember, you even had the scapegoat. The scapegoat was, uh, Christ was a substitute for that. That's why John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Because Christ's sacrifice was the sacrifice that substituted the law of animal sacrifice. So, now that we got that, let's go back now to Romans chapter 6. Now we have a better understanding. 
See, and these are the scriptures that Christianity will pervert and uh, twist. Romans 6, 14 again. For, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law. What law? The law of sacrifice. But under grace. What does that part mean? Because I know right now, in, well, I'll say it like this. In Christianity, they say we're under grace. And that means we can do whatever the hell we want. No, 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 no. Let me give you a, 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 a man-made example. Okay? You go to the bank. You take out a loan. Take out a loan from a bank. Let's say you take out a loan of $20,000. It is to be paid back next year come March. That's when it has to be paid back. Come March, you don't have the $20,000. The bank, the bank gives you a grace period of two months. So now you don't have to pay it back in March. They give you until March April, May. They give you a grace period of two months until May. So because we're under grace, does that mean I don't have to pay the bank back now? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means they're giving me an extension of time to get my money, my financial situation corrected to fulfill my obligation and pay back the loan. See, that's a, a base understanding, but do Christians, do black Christians understand it? No. They say, for example, well, as a thief, a liar, an adulterer, I'm under grace now. And because I'm under grace, I can keep on being a thief, a liar, and an adulterer. That is the evil perversity and corruption of stupid Christianity. And we grew, many of us grew up in church like that all our lives. That's why there's adultery in the church, there's stealing in the church, extortion in the church. You, any, you name wickedness, it's in the Christian church. We eat pork, shrimp, it, and half the church is sick in the hospital. Because why? We don't obey no laws, not even the dietary laws. From there, let's go to Galatians 5.18. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, and verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, meaning if ye led of Christ, ye are not under the law. Under what law? The law of sacrifice. You're not under the law of sacrifice. That's what that's talking about. Okay, it doesn't mean, hey, we're not under the moral law. We can be immoral. Hey, we're not under the civil law. We can be uncivil towards each other. Hey, we're not under the dietary law. I can eat whatever I want to eat. Crocodile, alligator, mongoose. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Doesn't mean that at all. Hey, I'm not under the ceremonial, ceremonial laws. I ain't got to keep God's laws like Passover as a holiday, a Feast of Unleavened Bread, a memorial blowing of trumpets, the new moon, the Sabbath. I ain't got to do that. I can make up my own. Like birthdays, anniversaries, uh, Christmas, Kwanzaa, uh, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, what else? See, these are man-made traditions. This is why we've gone into slavery and continue to remain oppressed in this system of sin. All right? So, what else did I want to hit? Let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to read 1 through 5. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, that means today, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. One of the doctrines of devils, or the main doctrine of devils, that's right, you guessed it, Christianity. It's a doctrine of devils. You know, that is a religion where our people worship a God that does not look like them. And then you got those who get cut so bad because we prove that Christ is a black man. They go, it ain't his image, brother. It's his message. Well, moron, if, you got, if your slave masters gave you the wrong image, guess what else they gave you? The wrong message message. And a lot of you Christians ain't figured that out yet. You think that your oppressor was so loving, so kind, they taught you the proper message. 
That's why you still celebrate Christmas and Easter, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, Dog Day, and Baby Day. You follow this doctrine of devils. Okay, then it reads on. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Because you got the Bible, but you speak lies as you hold the Bible. We'll ask you, for example, when was Christ born? You say December 25th. Yeah, December 25th. Can you prove that in the Bible? Uh, no, but uh, I believe we can just celebrate the birth of Jesus. And although we're not sure of when it, that's called hypocrisy. Because you're not reading none of that in the Bible. Okay, let's read it again. Verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Here's another one. What color is Christ? White. Can you prove it in the Bible? Uh, 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 uh no, but, uh, then you say, it ain't, it ain't his color that's important. It's his message. Really? His message? Yes, brother, because you know, for God so loved the world. Oh, yeah, that means everybody? Yeah, brother. So you mean like the Philistines, the Jebusites, the Moabites, and the Edomites? Yeah, 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 brother. So, you should be able to go into the Bible where God says he loves the Edomites, the Jebusites, the Philistines, the Moabites, so forth and so on. And these Christians will flip all through the Bible for hours, finding no scriptural reference, but still hold on to that abomination. And they will disregard every reference to the nation of Israel. Disregard it. That's hypocrisy. Verse 2 again. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know when you iron your clothes, the phone rings, and you, you leave the iron on your clothes, and you go to answer the phone? Then you come back and go, oh, shoot! And that iron burned an image, its image, into the cloth, into your clothing? You know you can't get that burn out. That, cl that cloth, whether shirt, pant, whatever, is no more good. You got to throw it in the garbage. So God is saying some of you have your conscience burned with a hot iron. And what is that hot iron? A doctrine of devils. Christianity is seared into your mental fabric of your mind. You're good for nothing. God can't use you. You have to be thrown away. You have to be is evaporated. Okay? So let's read on. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Now what religion forbids men to marry and commands you not to eat meat on Fridays. It's a Christian religion, the main one called Catholicism. Catholic, the Catholic religion. That's the mother religion of all Christian breakoffs. Under that, you got Pentecostal, Jehovah Witness. Those are the children of the Roman Catholic Church. So it explains the doctrine of devil. Let's read it again, verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So they, Christianity will use and pervert that and say, see, everything you can eat, as long as you receive it with thanksgiving. And many of you black Christians are sick. A lot of you have died because of your diet. You have eaten everything God says don't eat in the Bible. You said because you pray over it, you can eat it. Now, with COVID-19, a lot of you dropping dead, especially in the Christian church, okay? So what does that bottom part mean where it says, which with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth? What is the truth in the Bible? Let's go to Psalms 119, all right? Psalms 119, verse 142, and it reads, it says, Bear with me. Here we go. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. What is, we talk, what is it talking about in reference to 1 Timothy chapter 4? You, remember, you have dietary law, moral law, civil law, ceremonial law. But we're focusing now on the dietary law. That's, that's the truth. Watch this. Verse 4. 1 Timothy 4 4. Uh, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. That's another verse you use to pervert. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Ask yourselves, where is, the, where is where are the foods sanctified in the Holy Bible? 
Sanctified means made clean. You got to go back to Leviticus 11, verse 44. Leviticus 11, verse 44. Watch this. For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth by eating unclean insects. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Verse 46. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So the sanctification is here in Leviticus 11. Okay, so when you go back to 1 Timothy 4 and verse 5, where it says, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer, you got to know where the foods are sanctified by the word of God. Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14. Okay, I hope y'all got that. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. So because you teach in Christianity, we're not under the law and you teach it in a perverse way. You say we're not under the moral law civil law, ceremonial law, or dietary, we are physically sick and mentally and spiritually sick. Watch this. 1 Timothy 6, and I'm going to read verse 9 and 10. Watch this. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. Remember our brother, Pastor Strick Strickland, oh, he fell into temptation. Christianity is about making that money. And when the process of you making that money, there are all kinds of temptations out there that you give into. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. See that foolishness that Pastor Strick Strickland and his wife got involved in? Those are foolish and hurtful lusts. Okay? Which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced, them, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So now our brother, Pastor Strick Strickland and his wife now, as of this year and his wife, have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay, and I pray for our brothers and sisters that we can, that the Lord allows us to recover, recover ourselves out of the snare of the devil. That's my prayer. All right. All right. Let's get to the reading of your shout out letters of exhortation. All right. This one is from L. Barry. Sent a card there. Uh, wrote this way, March 10th. Shalom, Bishop. I hope this letter reached you and your family in good health. I am so happy the Most High God raised you men up to teach his word the right way. In truth and righteousness, you brothers depart, you brothers depart to us wisdom and knowledge for our stability. What an honor it is to be a part of this great awakening of the nation of Israel. May the Most High God send his angels to keep us safe from our enemy until his return. As Deacon Malachi from IUIC Atlantis would say, Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your hard work. May the Most High God of Israel bless you all. I enclose a small donation to help in any way I can. Shalom, L. Barry. Thank you, Barry. We appreciate you so, so much. All right. This one is from Guy, Guy, uh, Guyvins. Guyvins. I think I said it right. To Bishop Nathaniel, thank you for the service that you and the leaders of IUIC are doing for the Most High. I pray for your health and your family's health and all IUIC. I pray God continue to guide you and the brothers of IUIC in your mission to wake up the 12 tribes. May he continue to protect you and keep you in good health with all IUIC family. Thank you. God bless you and safe return for Mission 35. Thank you so much. Mission 35, if you may not know, was our trip to Guyana. And believe it or not, when we bring up this gospel, although the, a small remnant is prophesied to repent, and we saw that in Guyana, 
there is still a larger portion of pe two thirds, as a matter of fact, that despise the truth of God. I'll give you another example. We are sending some literature to India. And if you ever look up the CDs, the CDs were our people that were taken in during the transatlantic slave trade to India. Okay. And we have been trying to find uh, people to translate our literature into the dialect that the CD speak, which is an Indian language over there. And do you realize that two translating companies in India reject? So once they got it, they read it, they rejected it. They said, we are not translating that for them. You can't make this stuff up. So we are at war, brothers and sisters. We are at war. And you're going to find out. Not only are we at war against the nations that despise us resurrecting, there's some of our own people that are against this truth. Some of our own people. And some even know that they're Israelites. And they make it their business to antagonize, to make war against us, raising up the 12 tribes of Israel. So we need your prayers. We need your constant, constant support. All right. So now, this is from Sister Nava of our Houston camp. She writes, Shalom Bishop, Most High Christ bless you and your family. I pray that all is well and you're, and you're in excellent health. Thank the Lord. I'm a little hoarse right now, but y'all just pray for me. Here's my donation to help further the truth throughout the world. Please use it wherever it is needed. Bishop, I thank the Most High for waking you up and giving you the fruits of the Spirit to gather the rest of our mighty leaders to teach us. Um, you, your leadership, endurance, and patience with us is unmatched. Not to mention the love you'll sh you've shown for us stiff-necked people. <laughs> I will continue to pray for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and good health for each one of you and our nation. Bishop, at age 73, wow, shout out to you. At age 73, I thought I knew all, have been through all, and seen it all, until my son-in-law brought me the truth. And I quickly realized this is the real truth and nothing but the truth and that I know nothing. All praises to the Lord for humility. To humble down was easy for me. Love you, Bishop. Keep up the good work. Sister Nava, Houston Camp. Thank you, Sister Nava. All praises to the Lord. All praises. All right. This is from Abraham and Sarah. Greetings to IUIC family, to Bishop. We are sending a love donation to help the Booster Club to spread the good news. We are assembling with the Detroit camp. My husband, Robert C., who is called Abraham, was born and raised keeping the commandments. All praises. I came into the truth in 2008. We are both renewly married. We met at Passover. If it be the Most High's will, he will give testimony. We thank you for being obedient to the call. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. We will respect the fact that you don't like lengthy letters. We, uh, we once again say thanks a million. Shalom. P.S. Robert and Talis are Abraham and Sarah. All praises. Thank you all so, so much. All right. This is from Sister Nabia. She writes, uh, Shalom, 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 Bishop. <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. And to you, to your family and all IUIC, giving all praises to the Most High. I am truly thank, thanking the Most High for every little bit that I can put together to sin because we are wanting to be able to be a blessing even if, if it's just a very little. I feel like the certain poor widow in Mark 12, verse 42, who gave two mites, but being homeless, but still having, but still having the, but still having determination, but still have the determination to do all we can, and not just keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, but putting what I can together to help push this word out, or forever it can be used. I'm truly thanking you all so much at IUIC.
for bringing forth the truth, waking up our brothers and sisters on the four corners of the earth because we should want to be determined to push throughout, through all the hell the enemy wants to throw at us and push us out of because we know we as the true Hebrew Israelites, we have a heavenly home that is soon to come, that's right, on earth and we all want to go. So we know we must endure until the end, but it was never said that it would be easy getting there. Again, thanking you all for adding us to IUIC prayer list, and you all be blessed, all of IUIC and brothers and sisters around the world. Be, excuse me, be blessed. P and H Watson, all praises. Thank you so much. All right, you've sent another one. Let me see the dates. All right, this one was March 9th. This was March 8th. Nabia. Shalom, Bishop, giving all praise to the Most High for you and all, IOIC, as the Most High is keeping us all, but truly thanking the Most High for our true joy is truly soon to come. And also truly thanking you and all the captains and all the deacons for accepting the work of the Most High, praying many blessings for each and every one of you and all IOIC and their households and all our brothers and sisters. And we all stay focused and stay healthy. And we all stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless P and H Watson. Watson, all praises. Thank you so much. All right. This one says this is Canarsie, New York. Sister J D. Holy greetings, Bishop. I thank the Black Messiah for letting me know the true and the greatest teacher in the whole world. Or <laughs> In my early ages, I was searching for something going to church, to church after church. I could not find it. I was sick, depressed, and sad all my life. I was one of the dry bones in the open valley. Ezekiel 37, Lord sent his true prophet to prophesy upon me as one of the dead bones. Bishop Nathaniel, you are the, you are the representation of Ezekiel. All praises to the Lord. I ain't Ezekiel, but I understand what you're saying. All praise to the Lord. Thank you, Bishop. I am reviving. I was dead. I am alive now. I was lost, and now I am found. I was blind, and now I see. There was no greater riches that I could find than my true nationality, the 19th of May, 2020, by Captain Gideon and the two mighty men that was with him. Since that day, I am a happier person, never been before, I was in prison spiritually, but now I am free of charge. No one can take away IOIC leadership from me because I was sick all my life. I got healed completely the 19th of May, 2020. You, uh, you will receive blankety blank for you personally. Thank you, sister. All oh, praise to the Lord. Um, uh, is it okay, Bishop, to buy lottery? Lottery is, you know, it's a game of chance. It's, it's legal. It's you know, you got illegal lottery. Like I remember my mama used to play, uh, what was that thing? There was a book. I think it was called Red, Big Red, where it was an illegal underground thing. And anyway, that's another story, another time. But they do have legal lottery, which is lawful to play. Now, don't, put all, don't invest all your money into that. Do it sparingly if you're going to do it, okay? Well, praise to the Lord. Um... If I went, I'd buy you a jet to go and preach this living water that quenched my thirst. We'll do the same for others. Thanks a million, Bishop and the leadership. My name is Sister J.D. Thank you, Sister J.D. All praises to the Lord. That was funny. All praises. All right. This from March 9th. Dear Bishop, greetings and salutations. I've been in the truth going on three years now, and I'm so grateful for the IUIC teachings. The first time I saw a video, an old one, of you and Deacon Asaph, shout out to Deacon Asaph, my life was forever changed. Although I had been reading my Bible for years, your teaching showed me I had missed, overlooked so much. I thank God for you and your Sabbath classes and especially enjoy the ones that are suitable for all ages. Yes, I want y'all to understand some classes are suitable for all ages, some are not. Some is for strictly adults. Okay, so just be mindful of that. Okay, uh, 
For I believe that they lead the Most High's people into the truth. May the Most High continue to bless you and your household. Please keep doing what you do. Most High in Christ bless Sister Joanna of IUIC Boston. Shout out to Boston Camp. That's uh, Captain Gideon, yes. Also, thank you for your prayers a few months ago. My name, uh, it was Leah, was lifted up at the end of the Sabbath class for healing due to my terminal cancer diagnosis. All praise to the Most High. I am truly still here and forever grateful to IUIC. I am humbled truly. I thank God for his mercy and grace and for blessing me with, with, with um, each day. With each day, each hour, moment, minute, in spite of myself. His praises shall be forever in my mouth, and my life is hid in him. All praises, sister. All praises to the Lord. Leah, all praises. Definitely going to keep you in prayer. All right. Uh, this says, Shalom, IOIC. Please put blankety blank towards the booster club and blank towards flyers and blank to Deacon Asaph. I've been locked up 17 years. Wow. I've been locked up 17 years, been in this truth for the last six years. I go up for parole in 2029. Lord willing, I get it. If so, you will be seeing me. I keep leadership as well as the whole body in prayer. Please keep me in prayer. I need it. Uh, Vincent R. Uh, and you got, you, you, you call Ben Israel. Okay, uh, you call. Yes, yes, sir. I'm going to keep you in prayer that that parole goes through for you, Lord's will. All right. This, it reads, uh, to IUIC, my family came out of the money Christian churches a long time ago. As God would not let us be satisfied there with the lies, deceptions, and ignorance being taught. We understood that we live in Babylon, tiring to speak in tongues is a brainwashed technique and later discovered the significance of Sabbath worship, not Sunday. The Lord led one of us uh, to watch your program, and we, dis we discovered who we are as we read along scriptures with you. We want to help IUIC to reach and educate our people of the 12 tribes of Israel throughout the world. Thank you, IUIC, for what y'all do from your sister and brother, uh, Carl, no, I'll say Mr. And, uh, it, it says Sharon and Howard. Thank you, Sharon and Howard. All praise to the Lord. Thank you so much. All right. Dated March 12th. Dear Bishop Nathaniel, I am writing this letter. I am writing this letter to thank you for finally hearing the truth. My 83 years old mom discovered you on YouTube last year and shared you with her children. My mom has been asking preachers and bishops questions for 50 years and no one has, no one has answered, no one had her answers or would tell her and would tell her to please go sit down and that no one has those answers. We have belonged to Pentecostal, Baptist, Seventh-day Adventists, never being satisfied with what they were teaching. Just kept getting sent back down the rabbit's hole with their answers. What they said didn't add up to the experiences we suffered being black. Finally, all our questions have been answered, and it all makes sense. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop Nathaniel. Watch you now every chance we get. Uh, thank you. Uh, Car Carlise, Carlise, P.S. We always knew they were preaching and teaching with no proof of history. All praises to the Lord. All praises. Thank the Lord for waking you up. All right. This is from Nabia again, dated March 3rd. All right. This reads, Shalom, Bishop, giving all praises to the Most High for you, for you and all of IOIC. And to all our brothers and sisters on the four corners of the earth, as the Most High is keeping us all. Yes, even in the midst of our troubles and trials and in our not so good situations. But our true joy is truly soon to come. And so I'm so glad we are still able to hear the truth on the word of the word come forth. 
and praying and giving praises to, for our brothers and sisters that are still waking up and learning who they are in the Most High, truly thanking you and all the captains and all the deacons for accepting the work of the Most High, praying many blessings for each and every one of, of you and all IOIC in their households as we all stay focused and stay healthy and as we stay in the spirit. Most High in Christ, Most High bless P and H Watson. All praises. All right. Dated March 10th, Shalom Bishop, Most High in Christ bless. Welcome back and we thank you for all the works you do. My husband John says shalom and keep doing good works and waking up the 12 tribes of Israel. Thank you and shalom. John, Jen, and Hezekiah. P.S. Please accept our alms. Thank you all so, so much. All praises to the Lord. This one is a card. It says thank you. Shalom Bishop and IUIC family. Greetings from Michigan. My family and I would just like to say thank you for playing a major role in helping us wake up to the truth. We came across one of your videos back in 2017. You were talking about how our ancestors knew the laws of marriage. We thought you were absolutely crazy on how you delivered the message. Back then we were still Christians in the Baptist church and we went through two years of turmoil. Came across your videos again and it was then we realized we were the ones who were crazy. <laughs> July 7th, 2019 was our last Sunday, AKA Satin Day. Uh, <laughs> ever stepping foot back, ever stepping foot back in, or should be never stepping foot back in the church. Ever since then, we have been watching how you I see and have been continuing to grow in the truth. All praise to the most high God. Uh, thank you so much for all you do for your nation of people. Here's a token of our appreciation. Most high in Christ bless the Phillips family. Thank you, Phillips family. All praise to the Lord. Thank you so, so much. All right. This says, dream because history has always dreamt of a future like you. All right. All righty then. Now inside there's a photograph. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, let me read the letter first. Shalom Bishop, happy to see you all made it uh, a safe trip. Hope and pray all is well. This is a shout out to Mother Shamara for Daughters of Sarah. Shout out to Mama Shamara. <laughs> I'm incorporating the inf informative teaching into my life as an aged woman sharing with the younger women. Encloses my picture for Mother Shamara as one of the daughters of Sarah. All praises. This is your lovely photo here. Okay. And you write um, arms, booster club. Mother Shamara, however she wants to, blankety blank, love, sister, Sher oh, this is Sherry, Sherry H, O, last initial O, now I know what you look like, all praises to the Lord, keep me in your prayers, yes ma'am, will do, all praises, will do, will do, all right, all right, this is, let me start at the top, Silah. Shalom to all faithful members of IUIC. That's right, faithful members. And also to our wonderful bishop, all praise. Uh, I pray all is well. I try to keep my letters short and brief. Ha <laughs> ha. I love y'all, my beautiful real family of Israel. Here's a little something to help. Please stay focused and in the spirit of the Lord and continue his great works. All thanks to the Most High God and his son, the Black Messiah. Shalom, brother Judah and sister Atara. Most high in Christ, bless to you all. Shalom. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you all so, so much. All right. This is from Leonor, Leonor M. Most high in Christ, bless you, our leadership and our nation. That was very short, but all praise to the Lord. Thank you. All right. This is a, on a card. All praise to the Most High Bishop. Here's my donation for the Booster Club and arms. Thanks for your great teaching. Bible to let our people know who they are really are God's chosen one. Laura M. Thank you, Laura. All praises. All right. This one. Most high in Christ. Bless you, Bishop. I feel really happy for giving alms to help our people Israel. Praying that God will continue to protect you all on the street. As you all wake up Israel, teaching them who they are, please pray for me, Millie. Shalom. Yes, Millie, definitely will add you to the prayer list and keep, continue to pray for you. 
All right, this one reads, Shalom Bishop, Most High in Christ, blessed to all those who strive to endure keeping the commandments. Please keep myself and family in prayer, D. Foster. Yes, D. Foster, have continued to do so. All praises. All right, Shalom Bishop, Most High in Christ, blessed. I'm sharing an experience so that all Israel can learn from it. Ecclesiasticus 12.10, never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. I'm a truck driver. I pulled up to a lot to park, and another driver who drives for the same company I drive for jumps out his truck and is eager to help me park in a spot next to him. The, the parking spot was awkward. Esau begins waving me in, but I feel there is no, not much room. I begin to slowly... I, be, I began to slow, I began to slow, and he began to wave me in more vigorously. I hit his truck. I now had to report an, an accident on my record because I transgressed the instruction of the Most High. Never again will I trust my enemy. Please accept these arms to help spread this truth to the four corners. Brother ben Benjamin. Yes, Brother Benjamin P. of Kinston, North Kakalaka. All praise to the Lord. All praises. All righty. We want to give a shout out to L. Barry. Thank you, L. Barry. Shout out to uh, Juline D. Thank you, Juline. Uh, shout out to Martha M. Thank you, Martha. Uh, another shout out, to, uh, shout out to Pamela P. Thank you, Pamela. Shout out to, this is that name, Guy something. You're in Michigan. Shout out to Nava. Thank you, Nava of Houston Camp. Shout out to Robert and Talise. Thank you all so much. Shout out to Patrice W. Thank you. All praises. Shout out to Patrice W. Again, all praises. Shout out to Jennifer E. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, shout out to Pella Lila. All praises, Pella Lila. Shout out to Joanna I. Thank you, Joanna. Shout out to Vincent R. Thank you, Vincent. Shout out to Howard L. Thank you, Howard. Shout out to Sharon and Corliss. All praises. Shout out to Pella Lila, Israel. Thank you. Shout out to Regina B. Thank you, Regina. Shout out to Hermel and Patricia W. Thank you. All praises. Shout out to... Oh, Rita. Rita B. Thank you, Rita. Shout out to Lillian R. Thank you, Lillian. Shout out to Sheila K. Thank you, Sheila. Shout out to Leon and Laverne M. Thank you all so much. Shout out to Johnny B. D. Okay, all praise to the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, and that other name there, it says Taylor J. Okay. Shout out to Herbert C. Thank you, Herbert. Shout out to Joyce, middle initial A, last initial H. Shout out to J, last initial. No, J is your first initial. G, middle initial, and Phillips is the last name. Thank you so much. All praises. Shout out to Sherry H.O. Thank you, Sherry. That's the one who sent the photo. All praise to the Lord. Sherry again, thank you so much. Shout out to Mr. Judah and Atara. Thank you all so much. Shout out to Lenore M. Thank you, Lenore. Shout out to Classius A. Thank you, Classius. Shout out to Laura M. Thank you, Laura. Shout out to Ernest G. Thank you, Ernest. Shout out to Millicent and Merlene. Millicent and Merlene. Thank you all so much. Shout out to Brother Benyamin. Thank you so much. And last but not least, shout out to D. Foster. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Lord. And y'all know how I love to say, let's all of us stay healthy, stay faithful, stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless you all. Shalom, love you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed 
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.